Hi everyone and welcome to another Hangout on Air. My name is Whitney and I'm over here at Google Headquarters in Mountain View, California. Um, today I'm joined by my colleague Katie. Thank you so much for being here. And we're really excited to talk to you all today about search campaigns, one of our favorite subjects. Um, this Hangout's going to help you out if you're new to using AdWords and kind of unsure about where to start and want to make sure you're getting off on the right foot. And it's also a really great refresher if you just want to take a second look at your campaigns and make sure that things are going well. You'll see the Q&A feature to the right of this video here, and if you're actually watching live from the Google Plus page, you can go ahead and add your questions. Uh, we're going to try to make sure to leave some time to get to them at the end. And also feel free to add any questions to the comments, and we'll definitely make sure that those get addressed. Yep. So let's uh, jump right in. As Whitney said, we're going to take a look at a search campaign that we set up earlier today, and we're going to see if we can make some improvements to it to make sure that we're using our budget uh, wisely. We don't want to be wasting any of that. Um, so it's really also important to think about before we get started, what are the goals of your advertising? So in this case, we are advertising Luigi's Pizza in New York, um, and they do pizza delivery as well as have a sit-in restaurant. So we want to make sure that we are targeting people who are either looking for delivery or looking for a nice restaurant to sit down in. Um, so we're going to start by taking a quick look at the general structure of, a, of an account and of a campaign to remind ourselves of, of how we set things up. Perfect. So we're going to take you on a really quick tour here. Um, the first place we're going to start is the Campaign Settings tab, where we've actually got the default settings in place. The most important settings like budget and location are at the campaign level, so we're going to want to pay attention to those. And now we're going to navigate over to the Ads tab, which is to the right of that. Um, and you'll see that we've got an ad already going over here. And then this other most important tab is the Keywords tab, which is just next to Ads. Yep, so we're going to actually start by taking a look at our campaign settings. Um, and we want to make sure that we have everything set up properly. So just as a quick, again, overview of the things that you can set at the campaign level, you can do um, your the campaign type. So if we're focusing on search network only today. Uh, the So the network that you're looking at, the budget, the location target that you have, the bid strategy, um, a campaign end date. Uh, so there are a lot of different things that you said at the campaign level. It's really important to get those settings right. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go ahead and jump back into that account, and let's make sure that we've picked the best campaign settings for what we're trying to do here. So if we go back into that settings tab, the first thing that I'm going to do is draw attention to the fact that this campaign is all features. Um, the default here is standard. So if your campaign is on standard, you're going to want to make sure and throw it into all features like we've done here. This opens up some really cool opportunities for you to do things like ad scheduling and some specific bid adjustments. It's just a great way to start a campaign off right. It's something I always recommend to people. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to check out is actually this Devices tab, which is right below Settings, that gray bar there. So we're looking at targeting people on all sorts of devices because we want to get people as they're out and about in New York looking for a place to eat. They might be on their cell phones. Maybe people at work trying to order a carry-out lunch for their team, they're going to be on their computer. So this is a campaign where we're actually going to want to make sure that we've got all devices targeted. But if you do have a preference, you can actually raise or lower your mobile device bid from here. The next thing, if we go back into all settings, is going to be languages. Um, so you're going to want to scroll down to the location and language section. Just make sure that, you know, if you want to target English speakers only, go ahead and do that. If you're a bilingual business, you're going to want to throw that in. And another really important thing to note is the default setting for location for accounts open in the United States is the United States. So if you're a local business like Luigi's Pizza in New York City, you're going to want to make sure that your location targeting matches where you actually are. Um, and you can even do things like go ahead and throw up a radius around the location where you are. Uh, there's some really cool options with location targeting, so it's really worth paying attention to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the other things that we're going to take a quick look at here in your all settings are the bid strategy and budget. Obviously, two really important things to make sure your campaign is running well. For the bid strategy, um, generally I suggest if this is a new campaign, or maybe if you're already running a campaign but you're not getting as many impressions as you would hope for, um, to switch it to automatic bidding. Um, there are a lot of different bid strategies, but the reason why I suggest automatic is that it allows the system to do a lot of work for you. So you can set a maximum bid that you want, but within that, it lets the system uh, fluctuate your bids to get you the most clicks. So it's just an easy way to make sure that you're 
covering all of the traffic that you're looking for. Um, and then other than bid strategy, your budget. You want to make sure that you have this set properly. So do some, uh, you know, some work anal analysis on what you want to advertise, um, how much you want to spend. I really highly suggest looking at this on a you know, monthly basis. So how much do you want to spend on advertising each month? And then divide that by 30, and that's going to give you your average daily budget. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really important to set that at you know, an amount that you're comfortable with. Because some days you might not spend quite that much if uh, you know, the traffic isn't as high, you don't get as many as clicks as you were expecting. Some days it might go slightly over if the system is you know, compensating for when it didn't spend that much. So look at it on a monthly basis and then use that to set your daily budget for each campaign. Yeah, that's a really great point. Mm -hmm. um, budget's super important and really, really good advice to look at it on a monthly level. Mm -hmm. So the next thing that we're going to take a look at now that we've got our campaign settings sorted out is actually our general account structure, um, which is something really important to pay attention to when you are running particularly a search campaign, but really any sort of campaign. So we want to target people who are looking for delivery and carry out pizza, as well as people looking to sit in and have a meal at a restaurant. Those people are probably going to be using different searches on Google. Someone might be looking for best pizza delivery. Somebody else might be looking for a romantic Italian restaurant. So we're going to want to use different keywords to target those two different audiences. The easiest way to do that is to divide your campaign into two ad groups. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and create an ad group. And I think we actually have two created in the campaign that are divided out by these two audiences. So let's just go into one. Uh, we'll start with the restaurant one. Let's make sure that we're actually using this ad group to target people looking for a sit-down dinner. Um, and, and make that work to our advantage. Yep. So if we go ahead and go into that. Yeah, we'll take a look at just kind of the general structure of one of them and you can kind of follow this, um, you know, the same ideas as we talk, that we talk about here when you're creating your own. So if we go into the ad group that's about, um, you know, targeting somebody looking for a restaurant, if we go to the ads tab, we'll start by taking a look at the ad that's created and the text that's used there. So you want to make sure that you're really looking um, to target somebody who, you want to catch somebody's eye, I guess I should say. So you want to target somebody who's looking for a nice Italian restaurant in New York. What is going to catch their eye? Um, you can include something like best Italian restaurant in New York. And if you have some reviews that state that, make sure those are on the landing page. Or you could have romantic Italian restaurant, you know, call today for a reservation or something like that. So you want to have that call to action uh, to really get somebody to call you guys. That's the that's the main goal, um, and and so use that uh, I guess same uh, structure when you're looking at creating different types of ad groups for your business. Have very specific ads. The next thing we'll take a look at are the keywords. Um, so again, on the idea of having an ad group that's very specific to this segment of your business, the sit you know sit in restaurant that you have. That's what the ad states. You want to use keywords that are also very similar to that. So somebody who's looking for best Italian restaurant in New York, romantic Italian restaurant. Um, make sure to use a variety of keywords. You want to use some different match types. So for example, you can see that we have a couple on phrase match. Um, that's ensuring that we're targeting a very specific audience. So this is the ads and keywords that we've just taken a look at. Those are specifically in the restaurant ad group that we have. And then you would have a different ad group for people looking for pizza delivery. So this is just an example of the structure that we used for this one. Perfect. Now, while we're in this keywords tab here, I want to point out negative keywords, which are at the bottom of this keywords list. Negative keywords are super important for any sort of campaign. Um, we've got a few going here, really good ones, job, jobs, uh, recruitment, and vacancy. You know, I always tell people, if your product isn't free, go ahead and put the word free and cheap in as negative keywords as well. And these are getting added on the campaign level, which means that anybody doing a search uh, that includes these words won't see any of the ads in this campaign. Now let's go ahead and actually add an ad group level negative keyword. Remember this ad group is about people sitting in and eating at the restaurant, so let's go ahead and put delivery in as a negative keyword for this one. This is going to help make sure that somebody looking for delivery is likely to see the pizza delivery ad and somebody looking to sit in and have a nice dinner is going to be able to see the ad dedicated to that that we've created here. And if we actually go ahead and go into that pizza delivery ad group and go to the ads tab, this is actually probably an ad that we might want to mobile prefer. 
Uh, mobile prefer means that the system's going to try to show this ad on cell phone and mobile devices. And you can go ahead and do that by going and editing the ad. This is just going to really help attract that audience that's on the go, people kind of on a rush, on their phone, looking for something quickly, a uh, really quick lunch there. And you can go ahead and really target these ads specifically to them. Absolutely. Now, we're going to jump out of this account and talk for a second about kind of putting the cherry on top of this awesome campaign that we have going here. And that's by using ad extensions. Ad extensions are kind of what they sound like. They make your ad bigger. They append additional information about your business to your search ad. It really helps users not only find something that's useful for them and relevant to them, but also just makes your ad bigger and stand out more on that search results page. Um, and another fun fact about ad extensions is they can actually help reduce your overall cost. Uh, they really help improve your ad relevancy and your rank on that search results page. So let's go ahead and start with one of my favorites and something super useful for a restaurant. That would be call extensions. If you go ahead, you'll see there's a whole tab devoted to ad extensions, that ad extensions tab there. And we're going to drop into call extensions. We can go ahead and although this restaurant isn't necessarily real and we don't have a phone number for it, if we did, we could go in and actually put a phone number here um, for this ad. It looks like there's one already in there. Um, and if you go ahead and actually check out this phone number, you'll see that we can mobile prefer this phone number just like we did with our ads there. Uh, just another way to further emphasize that mobile traffic, getting those calls, a really cool feature. Now, another important one for a restaurant, a brick and mortar location, would be location extensions. These actually append a location underneath your ad so users can see where you're located and get directions to you, which is super handy for people on the go, uh, tourists in New York looking for a quick bite. They're going to be able to find you really quickly there. Again, we don't have a real restaurant that we're advertising right now, so we don't have a location. But if you did, you could actually go ahead and link this up with your Google My Business profile where you have an opportunity to kind of promote your business for free on Google search, link it up here, and we'll sync those locations for you. Absolutely. And another type of uh, extension that I wanted to talk about here, my favorite type of extension, so I can say that, <laughs> um, our site link extension. So let's go ahead and click in here. Um, the thing that I love about this is it allows you to offer customers additional things to click on to go to your website. Um, so it doesn't cost any more to add these. You still just pay for the click. But it gives them the flexibility if they automatically know they want to go to, say, you have a link to a Contact Us page. They know they just want your contact information, and that's what they click on. So site links, as I just explained, are used to add additional links. You can choose to link to pages on your website that maybe people convert from, if that's you know what you're looking for, or that just add additional information for the user. So as I said, you could have one that's to a Contact Us page. You could have one that you know is it says about us, and it goes to maybe the history of your Italian restaurant if somebody's interested in reading about that. Uh, so it, it just adds additional information for the customers, and it just makes your ad look really nice. It's very professional. You're giving um, you know people who are potentially going to come to your restaurant all of the information that they would need right there in the ad. Uh, so use these, as Whitney has said, with the other call extensions that can improve the relevance of your ad. Um, for users when they're searching, and uh, can really help the click-through rate of your app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so don't be afraid to play around with some other extensions. We've got call-out extensions, which are super cool. They're mm -hmm. pretty new. They're like short little blurbs. There's review extensions, and there's extension types for almost every business. So uh, while in this instance, a call extension and a location extension make the most sense because you're a brick-and-mortar business, if you're e-commerce, if you're online only, if you're a service industry, there's going to be an extension that's going to work for you. Um, and they're totally free, so there's really no reason to not use them. Cool. So now that we've discussed basic campaign structure, making sure that your campaign settings are all set, and making sure that you have your campaign divided into ad groups that are relevant to the audiences that you're trying to target, um, I think we're good to go. There's a lot of other cool features, of course, that you can use with search campaigns, like uh, ad scheduling, for example. If you want to show your ads only during certain hours of the day or certain days of the week, um, there's certain bid adjustments that we didn't get a chance to cover today, all sorts of cool stuff. And our Help Center is a really great resource if you're ever interested in exploring some more options for further personalizing and optimizing your search campaigns. Uh, so don't hesitate to go ahead and check that out. Um, but other than that, feel free to go ahead and join us at this time next week. We're actually going to be talking about basic display campaign features and doing the same thing for display, and we're really excited about that one. 
absolutely. We're excited to talk about that. So as Whitney said, join us next week and thanks for joining us today. Thanks guys. Bye.